Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at a nice complex strike tutorial using a pretty standard carrier battle group. So uh, the reason I created this scenario is uh, some folks were asking for some more detailed kind of missions, so I thought I'd show something like this off. There is a copy of this actual mission available in the description below for those of you who want to kind of play with it yourself. So let's go ahead and take a look at our scenario today. Basically, we're sitting here in a handy dandy, uh, basically just south of Egypt. You know, you've got yourself a pretty good sized body of water here. Obviously, this is a very, very scary place for a lot of uh, civilian shipping to be operating from because of piracy and all that other good stuff. Uh, of course, uh, things, communication between uh, Country Blue and Country Red have uh, broken down significantly, and Country Blue has decided to send a warning strike to a known fortification set inside of uh, the Red Country's country. So basically what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and walk you through the process of kind of getting a strike together with the goal basically trying to prevent any sort of casualties on our side. So you're going to see a little bit of seed work, you're going to see a little bit of strike work, you're going to see a little bit of reconnaissance work, all to kind of come through. Obviously in the real world you're limited by what you have at your disposal. You know, if we had a bunch of uh, Russian aircraft, for example, let's say just a platoon, or what's a platoon? Say we have a couple flights of MiG-21s, oh, this is going to look a little different. But today we have a fairly modern carrier battle group at our disposal. So uh, first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at our things we have at our disposal. We have ourselves a pretty standard group. We have F-18Es, which are the big F-18s. You can see we've got some GBU-16s. Those are pretty handy. We've also got ourselves some AMRAMs. And this incredibly, incredibly useful thing that we have right here. We're going to need that a little later on. Coming over to the F-14Ds, it looks like we have the Bombcat version of the F-14Ds, some more GPUs. Obviously, we could do this with Mark 84s. Coming over to the F-18Cs, we have a good mix of things here. We have some uh, CBU-59s. These are APAMs. We also have some HARMs, which we're absolutely going to need. Looking at this setup right here, I can tell you that this is a deed setup as opposed to a seed setup because of the fact you have the missile to kill the radar, then you have the CBUs to blow up the site. This is going to be tremendously useful. Coming down here, we have some JDAMs. We really don't have a lot of these today, which is actually kind of a bummer because using JDAMs would make this whole operation a lot simpler. So let's go ahead and take a look down here. We've got some EA-6Bs, oh, more arms. You're going to absolutely need these, but more importantly, an EA-6B has this thing which is an incredibly effective jamming pod system. It's absolutely spectacular, and it's really going to save a lot of lives today. Of course, if you're on the other side, I'm not really saving lives, am I? Coming over, we have two Hawkeyes, which, of course, we always need to make sure we have them on deck, ready to go. And, of course, we have a group of Harriers. Now, you're looking at this Harriers. This is actually on an LHD nearby, and you're probably wondering why they're packing Maverick lasers. Uh, you'll actually see why in a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at how things are looking over on this place. So basically, our objective is going to be to try to attack this kind of hub of buildings down here. Looking really quickly, it looks like we've got ourselves a desert fort. We've got a little comms, by the way. That's the asterisk key on your keyboard, in case you're wondering. Uh, we have a communication hub, very, very valuable target. We have a truck depot, and we have a coastal fort, which is probably nothing too, too concerning. And again, it looks like we have an ammo bunker. It's going to take quite a bit of damage. And we have this desert fort. Take a look at this desert fort real quick. I'm just going to go scroll down. Whoa, boy. That's, uh, that's quite a few hit points there. So uh, this is going to require some very concerted effort in order to destroy it. I like the picture they got. It's kind of cute. All right, let's go ahead and put that away. So uh, we don't need to look at those uh, details anymore except for the one we've clicked on. All right, looks good. And of course, uh, what else do we know? We know that there's some observation posts set up around. We notice there's some kind of uh, electron early warning site. Uh, this is a pretty well-placed early warning site. They have some buildings, which basically probably some do with a pair of night vision goggles ready to go. Uh, weather for today, of course, taking a look. Uh, we have clouds between 10 and 16,000 feet which sucks. That means we're not going to be able to go plinking from high altitude. We're actually going to have to get dirty, which is a little unfortunate, but we'll make, we'll make do. Taking a look at the terrain, uh, this whole place seems to be in a very, very large valley. There's significant rocky outcroppings kind of surrounding it. You've got kind of this in a reverse C kind of shape here. Thinking about things real quickly, the observation posts seem to be kind of around these logical approaches, but I notice there's a gap in the observation posts along this really, really nice valley here. Now, anybody who's done any experienced stuff with reading history is know whenever you have valleys that seem to be awfully conveniently placed, 99% of the time there's something awful inside the valley that's going to ruin your day. So we're going to have to make sure that we recce this valley in the event that we actually want to take it. Now, this is, again, clever mission design and clever real-world tactics here. Now, if we were to come ripping along this valley, as soon as we pop out of the valley, it's a relatively short drive. You can see it's only about 10 nautical miles to get to the target zone. Now, the cool thing there is 10 nautical miles is more than enough. Again, if we're doing afterburner, it's going to be 45 seconds. 
that's not a long time. However, we know there's an SS2 site here, which is ready to rock. And I guarantee you there's going to be something else that's better at short range somewhere in here, literally waiting to cut us in two. So we're going to need to make sure we do reconnaissance. Now, if we come around this way, around the back, and we try to zip around this little mountain peak here, this mountain peak is going to be the most logical place to put any sort of warning site. Because again, it can see this entire valley. It can actually see down into this valley. So we want to be very, very cautious here. Now on the flip side, look what happens if we come down the south. We have this huge flat zone where the sand batteries will be able to tear us a new one and they'll have plenty, plenty, plenty of warning. So this is messy. And the first thing we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to do some reconnaissance. So to do some reconnaissance, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my carrier group. I'm gonna go ahead and get myself this F-18 here. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch him individually. Now this is a very, 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 very sophisticated reconnaissance platform. And while they're getting going, of course, I'm gonna go get my support units. I'm gonna get my Hawkeyes airborne, get everything nice and ready here. We're gonna go ahead and make sure his radar's turned on. Looks good to me. And we'll go see what we can see. All right, F-18's on his way. Let's go ahead and scoop him. Actually, it's the E-2. My apologies. Let's grab the F-18. And we're going to go ahead and send him over in this direction. Now, I noticed the moment we got airborne, we instantaneously identified some kind of mobile something. The other thing I noticed is we've been able to pinpoint where this EW site is a little bit more accurately. We're still not sure what this is yet, though. Now, hopefully our EA-8 here will be able to get a little bit closer. So we'll go ahead and speed up some time. Uh, let's see here, we're still getting all sorts of nastiness coming out of that bar lock there. Looking over on this side, we're still not sure what that is. Okay, while that F-18 is on his way, I'm going to go ahead and get our initial group of Seed Indeed aircraft airborne. Now, I have a pretty wide selection of aircraft to pick from from this. I've got guys with LGBs, which are okay. I've also got these F-14s with some more LGBs, not the greatest. Ah, here we go. Let's take a look here. We have some APAMs, which are beautiful CBU weapons. We also have some HARMs, which are also beautiful weapons for this purpose. We can, you can see we can carry a few of these. So I'm actually gonna grab this group of aircraft and go ahead and launch them. These guys are gonna be my deed planes. But more importantly, I want these airplanes. Now these are Harriers, which means they can go very, 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 very slow. And they also have standoff weapons. Now, you're probably sitting there going, okay, where are you going with this? Well, the reality is one of the problems we're going to have is we're going to get to the target, release any one of our weapons, and we're going to fly over it and basically get ripped a new one by any sort of AAA. With the Harriers, we actually have the ability to basically pretend we're helicopters, launch all of our weapons at extreme ranges, and then just turn around and go home. That's an amazing, amazing advantage that you don't have with most aircraft. And again, we're going to take advantage of that. And again, we're working on some assumptions here. All right, let's go ahead and grab our F-18 here. This is, again, remember, he's using the Sharp Pod. The Sharp Pod is neat. It's a combination camera, combination synthetic aperture radar. Basically, the moment I turn this radar on, it's going to be like night vision. It's like click, and all of a sudden, you're going to start seeing contacts up here. Every oh, done. <laughs> that was amazing. Talk about reconnaissance. All right, let's see what we got here. So we have a bunch of unknown targets, all mobile, which means there's some kind of vehicle. Now, it could be a truck. It could be some dude's Lada. It could be you know, a little UAV, you know, a Toyota Helix or something like that. It could also be AAA battery. It could be an SA-6. Oh, we have absolutely no idea what it could be. So I'm unfortunately going to have to get a little bit closer to be able to start to identify these targets. Now, in the old days, if we wanted to go ahead and identify these targets, we had to do some really sketchy stuff. Let me go ahead and grab an aircraft and kind of demonstrate what I mean here. Let's get a MiG-21R here. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll grab one from Cuba from today. I'll make sure he's got EO. Let me show you basically what you would have to have done in the old days. It's uh, pretty terrifying. Go ahead and drop this guy basically in a minimum altitude and get his speed going. What you would have to do is you'd have to take a reconnaissance platform equipped with a camera, and you'd basically have to skirt around as close as you can, desperately trying to get a photograph while not getting yourself shot down. So basically what you would do is you'd get something like, I said, like a MiG-21R, or like you get an F-16 with like a flare or something like that. And basically you go popping over here, ripping along as fast as you possibly can at low altitude, trying to do anything you can to try to desperately get that picture. And basically what you'd have to do is basically turn out of the way at the last possible second so that you'd have the ability to basically see this thing. You can see plenty of good frame cameras here. And it did the trick. Get out of here. Run, 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 Turn around. Run, 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 run. Low altitude. Go, 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 go. And this is why nobody wanted to do reconnaissance back in the day. But the good news is we were able to identify all the different targets and the different kinds. We also got an SA-2 to take a pot shot at us, which means we can identify what that is. You can see he's beaming it rather than running from it. This is a huge difference between what you should be doing versus what he chose to do. And he's dead. 
Ah, uh, that was stupid. So the problem here was, and again, this is the danger of doing the old school method of reconnaissance, is you basically would have to zigzag through all this as fast and aggressively as you can in the hope that something doesn't catch you. The safer thing would have been to go right over the valley, ducked, and the radar would have lost lock. But again, you can see just how sketchy that is and why this handy dandy little F-18 with its little fancy pot here was a superior option for this particular mission. Again, you got to work with what you got here. Okay, I'm going to use this aircraft now basically as an early warning platform for the purposes of keeping an eye on things. Meanwhile, if you remember a minute ago, I went and got ourselves a couple little aircraft here. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself my Harriers. I'm going to kind of get them set up over there. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my F-18s. I'm going to go ahead and set them kind of in the general direction here. Now, your instant instinct is going to go ahead and use those aircraft to target their handy-dandy EW weapon. A uh, radar, I should say, not weapon. It's not a weapon. The problem with this is, is we waste a perfectly good missile doing something like that. I think he's actually gotten close enough. Because if it is an SA-2, yeah, he's going to be right on the edge of the range. Might as well annoy him a little bit. So basically what's going to happen is if we go and blow up the early warning site with a harm missile, we're wasting ammunition. It's much, much safer to use one of those nice CBUs. Or remember a minute ago when I mentioned I had Harriers with laser mavericks? That's also a great system. But I'm not going to be using either one of these weapons for that purposes. Because remember, it's just a radar. All you have to do is hit it with a gun. But before we do that, we're going to have to deal with the longest range SAM system, which is our angry SA-2 right here. And it's doing a pretty good job of just irritating us right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my F-18s. I'm actually going to drop them down to low altitude. Remember, there's a very large mountain range right here. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to have them kind of come down like this, drop down to the altitude, trick the SA-2 into firing, fire a couple harms in its general direction, and then immediately get out of there as fast as you can. Now, there's a lot of really, really fun methods you can use for this. I've seen uh, some people actually do it where they'll have two sets of uh, airplanes basically to trick. You just basically ferret out the SAM while the other two immediately fire the harms. That's an amazing strategy, but there's a little bit of micromanagement involved with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to intentionally fly over here where their EW site is to get my aircraft identified. Now, you're probably going, why are you trying to get your aircraft identified? Well, they're not going to fire a SAM at me until they know exactly what kind of aircraft that I am. If we don't do anything, they're not going to do anything with it. So we've got to kind of keep that in the back of our heads as well. Our harms are ready to go. You can actually pre-select this target for harms if you wanted to. But again, since it's not actually radiating, we can't do anything with it just yet. So we're just going to go right over to the SAM site. We're going to drop down to minimum altitude real quick. Keep in mind, my Harriers are getting in position. I'm going to need them in a minute. I'm actually going to tell them to slow down. And they're going to come down really, 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 really low. Now, this is going to be extremely rude to this radar site, but it's one of the cheapest and easiest ways to solve these problems. I'm going to let everybody take a pass at it with their guns. And without even wasting the expensive missile, which we're going to need in a minute against that pesky SA-2, because remember, ah, that's what I was hoping he'd do. <laughs> you fools. You shouldn't have done that. And now I've gone ahead and sent two harm missiles their way. Off they go. That was silly. So now we're going to go ahead and finish our little attack strike here against our little handy dandy EW site. Remember, these guys have already got it queued up. Whoop, we went a little high with those missiles, but that happens sometimes. All right, everybody's going to go ahead and take their shot at the uh, radar site using their guns in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and order them to attack manually. Yeah, I'm kind of not a fan of them using CPUs, but ooh, that'll do the trick. And now their radar site is out of commission. And we know that this SA-2 is uh, probably a little annoyed at us, which is desirable. Now, since we're in the range of that SA-2, I'm actually going to get these guys ready. I'm going to need them in a minute. Now that I know that this SA-2 is kind of mad at us, I'm going to pop up to medium altitude real quick and slow down. What we need to do is trick that SA-2 into taking a pot shot at us. Because if we can get it to do so, we can go ahead and just rip it with a harm. There it goes. You can see it's already fired, but for some reason, my harms do not want to lock onto that battery for the life of us, which is actually a little irritating, but it's all right. Go ahead and uh, go down, back down again. We can always run out of missiles, too. I don't know why you guys are insisting on climbing here. The SA-2 is arcing, but it's going to get lost in the mountain range. Yep. Bye-bye, Mr. Missile. Nice try, though. All right, come back around again. Pop back up to medium altitude. I think that's two. I'm just going to confirm real quickly how many missiles. That might should be three. How many SA-2s? They fired three. They've only got three left in the battery. Oh, here comes the next one. Everybody get down. Everybody get down. Here comes the next one. <laughs> that was two. Oh, you're wasting those SAMs. Those things are expensive, you know. 
Ooh, we got something new, too. Looks like a straight flush decided to start shooting at us. So now we got an SA-6 that doesn't like us very much, which is awesome, because now I can deal with that SA-6 too and stay in a safe area here. Ah, I love those old of the show the shots with the harms. You guys have to get low. Get low. Here comes the SA-6. Has the SA-6 got line of sight? No, it does not. So not only is that SA-2 going about to get hammered because he's going to run out of ammo, but I just got a freebie on that SA-6 too. So this is actually really good. When it comes to seed, you almost always have to do it by hand. Oh, we got another one out of the SA-2, but that was bad timing. Oh, and that's the end of that SA-6. And that SA-2, that is his last two weapons. So now it's time to move on to our next phase. I'm still getting out. Nope, it's disabled. Uh, why are you folks turning towards the danger zone? You want to turn away. Okay, so this SA-2 battery is out of missiles. So we don't even have to engage it if we don't want to. This SA-6 just took two harms to the face. But we still know that we have a couple different targets left here. We have these two AAA batteries and we have whatever this is. Ah, it's an SA-9. Okay, so our handy dandy guys up here, they're in great shape right now. I still have four harms left and I haven't even done anything with them. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have them come around. And I'm gonna have them disable the last couple targets that I have left here. Anybody have a harm left? Oh, you do. I'll give one for you. And I'll go ahead and lock onto this guy. I'll give one for you. It's not gonna let me do it, is it? And we'll go grab this guy over here and we'll give him one too. And where's that jammer that was irritating us a second ago? Eh, you can have one too, because I don't like you. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and fire a bunch of these sand or these harms. And our goal here is to try to trick those gun batteries into turning on their fire control radar so we can get a freebie shot with the harm on them. If we don't do that, we're gonna have to do this the hard way, which I'm not really looking forward to. And we're about to get the jammer. Ah, they didn't take a shot. What a bummer. All right, so I'm gonna put these guys right up here at medium altitude out of the range. Remember how we disabled everybody? These guys can now pop up to medium range and actually just sit there because none of the missile batteries that were a danger to them are a danger to them anymore. So now it's just a matter of leaving them up there. Now it's time to go get our Harriers. So what are we gonna use these Harriers for? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clean house. Now we know that the weather here is clouds to 10,000 feet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set their altitude to be 9,500 feet. That means we're gonna be just below the cloud layer. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically set myself up on a little course to destroy everybody. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna switch to manual mode. Uh, let's, let's be polite here. You get two. Uh, this fellow over here, I know you've been very irritating today. I'm gonna to only give you two. Uh, we're gonna take our shilkas. We're gonna go ahead and uh, hammer the Zeus, I should say. We'll give you two. And again, I don't want you to feel left out, bad guys. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna make sure that you have a pair of them as well. And last but not least, I'm gonna grab the last one. And I'm gonna give him a couple too. And now, watch this. My Harriers are just gonna come ripping across the countryside here. Nice, leisurely pace. Remember, the SA-2 is out of missiles. They're just gonna be sitting here. They're gonna come spinning around. Oh, oh, there comes my first couple lasers. And they're coming down, they're coming down. Remember, because I'm traveling so slow, the missiles get there before they get in range. And goodbye, SA-2. Thank you for playing. I'm actually not happy with that. I think uh, he needs a few more because he's, he's just feeling left out. We'll give him a couple more. Oh, notice my... Ah, there's the gun dish. Do you see the gun dish? Told you. Told you. Now, these are the harms that I was waiting with. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, ow. And now watch these Harriers just rain laser death down on everybody. So you can see very clearly that uh, this is not a very fair engagement. Whoop. Looks like uh, they got a couple shots off, but that's okay. You guys have to turn back around, otherwise my lasers are not going to work. This happens a lot. Turn back around, turn back around. Oop, at least the Zeus is uh, wasting a bunch of ammo there. Ah, they got them all. Shucks. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and send these guys home, because uh, they're not going to be of much use to us anymore. Uh, we, of course, have got our F-18 still left. Uh, we had these two guys who did a really, really nice job of annoying them. We still have two sets of CBUs left, and I feel bad if we don't use them. The problem is, I'm not going to risk my F-18s at 2,000 feet in order to uh, try to do something with these two Zeus's here. And uh, by the way, we uh, still have an SA-9 here. So unfortunately, we were not as successful as I was hoping. But again, a Zeus is a very, very tricky platform to deal with. Okay, let's grab these guys. Uh, we're going to make a pass really, really quickly on their SA-2 one more time, just because I'm feeling rude today. Let's go ahead and select my APAMs. Looks pretty good. Of course, we could use our cannon, but if we use our cannon, you know exactly how that's going to end up going. We're going to stay up at altitude until we get a little bit closer. 
Again, remember that Zeus can't do anything to us this high. We're going to drop down to our attack altitude. And we're just going to come right up on top of the SA-2 and uh, remind it that we still don't like it. Ah, we're going to be too high for that attack. Let me back us up just a little bit. All right, coming around, coming around. Again, we have to get down to 2,000 feet. And there they go. Boom. <laughs> See you all later. Okay, now it's time to actually do our attack. Notice, by the way, our handy-dandy little AWACS platform still happily doing his little donut out here, giving us great up-to-date intelligence. So here's what we know. This SA-6 is dead. Its radar is toast. This Zeus is still working fine. Uh, this Zeus down here is also working fine. He's hurting. And then, of course, we have the SA-9 in the middle, who is perfectly capable of ruining everybody's day. So it's like, so what do we do now? Hmm... Well, the first things first is we know the Zeus has a range of about a mile, which you can see clearly here. So if we were to do something like this, we're going to get hammered. If we did something like this, we could probably be fairly successful at minimizing the time that we'd be in the basically the death zone here as far as with these two guys. They probably don't even have working radars anymore, but it doesn't stop them from shooting at us, even though it's 12 o'clock at night. So what we really need to do is do something about these. This SA-9 can be very, very dangerous. So uh, we'll have to take a look at what we have left to go ahead and finish up this battle. Okay, coming back over here, we have plenty of GBUs, which is what we're going to need. We can use those from altitude, except for the fact there's weather that's blocking us from using them from altitude. We have the Bombcats, same problem. We have these guys who, ah, oh, JDAMs. Oh, it is our lucky day. So we can use these F-18s basically as a way to deal with those last couple targets. The problem with these JDAMs is they're very, very easy targets for those Zeuses. So basically, you'd have to attack in two different wings. The first one would basically have to concentrate on distracting the radar gun. And then meanwhile, these would have to come out of nowhere and basically CBU it so he wouldn't have a chance to shoot back at him. Other option, of course, is uh, we can see we have some harms left, but there's no radar left on this map. So these aircraft, unfortunately, are not really going to be too helpful for us. Going back to our Harriers, we're out of those. Uh, F-18s, we got plenty of those. Okay, so it looks to me like we're going to have to send in two different waves of attack. So let's go ahead and set that up now. So I'm going to grab this one, this one, this one, and I'm going to go ahead and create a special attack. Get the AC. Call it a land strike. Again, you work with what you got. I'm going to go to F-18s. These guys look like they're going to be very, very capable at this. Go ahead and put them all in there like that. I'm actually, this is going to seem a little weird. I'm going to mark these as escorts. I know that sounds a little strange, but what's going to happen is these guys are going to drop the bombs, and these guys are going to protect them as they drop the bombs. Seems a little weird. I'm going to wait a couple seconds for that mission to register, and then we're going to go ahead and launch our main strike. Now, our main strike, I pretty much got everything set up earlier, so I don't have to worry about this too, too much. Go ahead and pause. I'm going to go ahead and grab all my harms, my EA-6s here. I'm going to mark them as escorts. They're not really going to do much for us, except I am going to have them turn on their jammers, just to make things a little interesting for us. All right, go to my F-14s. You guys are going to be my primary strikers. I'll let you do that. Grab my F-18Es. You're going to be the rest of my strikers, and you're going to be my air-air escorts. Um, press OK. I always make that mistake, but that's OK. Go back to F-18Es. We're going to mark all you folks as escorts as well. You never know. You never know. So I got my Bombcats. I got my Hornets. And I've got you guys are all set up. Everybody ran out of ammo a long time ago. So that's looking good. That's looking good. My primary target, naturally, is going to be, as you know. OK, looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Check, check, check. Chickity check before you riggedy wreck. Uh, looking good, looking good. Okay, that's it. My attack's ready to roll. I'm just going to let them go on their own. Meanwhile, that other group that we're going to need, I'm going to do a little bit of micromanaging of them because I want to make sure they're going to be careful enough here. And one of the great advantages of splitting your seed deed from your main group is you have so much more control, but again, I hate micromanaging. I really don't like to do that if I don't have to. So these guys are on the strike well mission. Uh, these two guys, I believe these are bombcats, they're all my strike well types. Let's go ahead and see if I can track down my other crew. If this ever happens in a problem where you have a tough time finding something, you can always press the O key to bring up your order of battle, and you can locate the exact aircraft that you're looking for. So let's see here. Dagger. These are my super hornets. I'm looking for my Cs. Ah, here they are. Hey, folks. I'll go ahead and I'll fast forward them a little tiny bit. So these, if you remember, are going to be my JDAM types. These are going to be the ones that we're going to be using for trying to hit. There's a follow-up group behind them. I believe I accidentally separated them in my efforts to speed things up a little bit. Ah, there they are. I'm going to go ahead and boop, speed these guys up a little bit. Grab my other go, boop, speed them up a little bit. So what we're going to try to do is strike them very, very quickly and very, very aggressively just outside of their effective range. Now, the stupid thing to do would be to let your weapons drop here. If you do that, you're basically going to give these SAM, I should say the AAA, the Zeus, a lot more time to launch them. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back to that mission. Again, this is our get the AC. 
we're going to go over and get the axe, get it. We're going to go over to our WRA, and we're actually going to reduce the range we're going to fire at. I don't want to be firing at a range that far. If we do that, like I said, they're going to get all that extra time to go ahead and lock onto those weapons, and they're probably going to get shot down. That being said, if in my luck, I usually lose every single JDAM I fire at these darn things. And keep in mind, how many times have we hit them already in this entire mission? But we haven't lost anybody, except for that MiG-21 demonstration model. <laughs> All right, got to get a little closer here. Keep in mind, our altitude's extremely high here. That's going to be problematic because they're... J oh, actually, they're JDM, so it doesn't matter what altitude we drop them at. So realistically, if we were smart people, we'd drop them vertically. So I'm actually going to pause the game one more time. I forgot their JDMs. I thought they were GPUs. Go back over here to get the AC, and I'm actually going to adjust their range even more so they drop the weapons vertically, basically right on top of them. Now, the neat thing is, since we're basically dropping it vertically now, they're going to have no time in which to react, you know, depending on what kind of comes down with that. All right, let's go ahead and pause. So normally, they'd be firing the weapons there, but remember, I changed their doctrine. So what they're going to do is they're going to drive right up, and they're going to knock. Drop their altitude down a little bit. Again, we want minimum flight time for these JDAMs. Otherwise, these stupid things are going to tear us a new one. So we're going to get a little bit closer, get a little bit closer. Just think about how much fun these poor Shilkas have had this entire battle so far. One quick trick that I've learned that works extremely well is to go ahead and kick everybody up to afterburner during their attack run. For some reason, they don't do this automatically. You can actually adjust their flight plan directly if you need to. This is just a great way to minimize the team. There goes the JDAMs. Everybody get out of here. Come on, get the Zeus, get the Zeus. Yes, and by the way, here comes the rest of our strikers right on time. <laughs> oh, that was not fair. Okay, folks, uh, let's 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 do it by the numbers. Let's uh, clean house here. Okay, okay, you get a bomb, and you get a bomb, and you get a bomb, and you get a bomb. Oh, you get a bomb too. All right, here comes our next round. Oh no, I feel like we should drop a couple things in the SA six just to make them not feel so left out. And you get a bomb, and you get a bomb, and you get a bomb. And keep in mind, you could be doing this with conventional weapons, but I'm just really enjoying the fireworks. And you could have bomb. Done. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our end results here. So this battle started, remember, at about 12.30. It's now an hour and 15 minutes later. And we lost our example aircraft. And we got everything. So hopefully this was a valuable tutorial as far as a video goes so that you can kind of see what it looks like trying to get these things all planned out. I tried to go over as many of the different tactical considerations as I could, kind of played it. Some things didn't work, but again, um, nothing ever survives first contact with the enemy, as we all know. Uh, going back, I think I should have been a little more aggressive with my Harriers, but they did such a beautiful job of absolutely ruining everybody's day. And again, I had plenty of harms left that I didn't even end up needing to use. Now, when I played with this kind of a scenario before, I've done it with all Air Force units, I've done it with all Russian units, you know, stuff like all British units, just to kind of experiment. And basically, the strategies end up being about the same. The goal there is you kind of get rid of the long-range stuff, then you get the short-range stuff, make sure you do reconnaissance, and then once the place is cleaned up, feel free to go nuts. Other than that, hopefully this has been fun. Enjoy.